If you're anything like me, this product presses your excitement button. As having a smart vacuum that can A, map an environment, B, avoid obstacles, C, vacuum, D, mop, and E, clean itself without any work on your part is the stuff of dreams. But this is real life, and it comes with extras. It comes with the DBOT X1 Omni Vacuum Slash Mop Robot with a plethora of sensors, two side brushes, a floating main brush, three wheels, and a mop system attachment with pads. The top is magnetic, which grants you access to the on slash off switch and a cute little bagless bin that can hold 0.1 gallons with a reusable washable filter that empties automatically when the vacuum goes back to the station or manually if you want to go back to that peasant lifestyle. The Omni auto emptying and auto cleaning station is large compared to other bases as it houses a clean water tub, dirty water tub, a cleaning brush, an extra pair of mop pads, and a 3 liter disposable dust bag. The power cord is removable and has a plus to wrap it on the back for cable management. Both the vacuum and the base feel well built, solid, and high quality. Each of the tubs has a thick plastic and rubber textured handles. Everything opens and closes easily along with sliding in and out of place smoothly. You can tell a ton of engineering went into every single aspect of this device. Replacement parts aren't too expensive either, which is good. They report an overall runtime of 140 minutes, which I found to be accurate on stock settings. But if you increase the suction power, it is a lot less. If you run out of battery mid-clean, it will return to the dock, charge a bit, and then resume cleaning. They report it takes 6.5 hours to charge fully, which is like forever, but probably did that to help maximize battery life, or perhaps it's a limitation of the conductive pin design, and also... Most of the time, once it's done vacuuming, do you really need it immediately? Anyways, they say it has a max decibel range of 68 dB. I found on stock settings, it was closer to 50 to 60 dB. I would imagine going to maximum suction would be between 60 to 68 dB. On the lid of the base, it gives you instructions on how to get started, which pretty much says unbox everything, scan the QR code, which then takes you to the EcoVax Home Vac app, which then walks you through the rest of the process, which is pairing your robot, connecting it to the internet, and it doing the initial mapping that you can see in real time. They report that it uses True Mapping 2.0, which scans the home environment, quickly generates a map, plans the most efficient cleaning paths, and they guarantee less missed and repeated spots, which I have found to be accurate. Once the initial mapping was done, I fine-tuned it by adjusting my house walls, combining some rooms, labeling them, and made a few software barriers, such as my stairs. I'm not sure if it would have thrown itself down them to escape its new lot in life, but I wasn't about to find out. It treats that barrier as a wall, and I haven't had any issues with it. Overall setup time is about 30 to 40 minutes. Not too shabby. The app is excellent, and I didn't run into any issues, and most of it is already set up, where you don't even need to do anything unless if you really want to. As there is an incredible amount of complexity here if you choose to explore it, and it is relatively simple to navigate. But I think it could improve on overall intuitiveness, as I often found myself hunting for what I was looking for, because it isn't exactly where I would personally put it, such as cleaning specific rooms, Room directly from the app. I know you can do this because I've done it before, but for the life of me, I cannot figure out how to repeat that, which is why I tend to rely on voice control as it is faster and easier, which I will be discussing a little bit more later. In the app, you can save multiple maps, view through the camera, see a 3D map of your home, adjust the map, virtual boundaries, label areas, divide, merge, etc. See the levels of clean and dirty water, battery level of the device, manually tell it to clean mopping pads, empty dust, or begin hot air drying. You can also customize cleaning preferences, such as cleaning sequence, smart cleaning, cleaning schedule, volume of voice assistant, and probably other things that I missed. The voice control supports Alexa and Google Assistant, but also have a unique one called Yiko, which you can access by saying, okay, Yiko, and then a plethora of commands such as begin cleaning, stop, return to dock, what are you doing? Clean X, Mop X, Clean Under Table, etc. You can say, I'm here, and through the sound localization tech, it will seek you out and clean around you. All of which worked well, just like any modern age smart assistant. Meaning sometimes it will hear you just fine, and other times you're left yelling at the wind, wondering what the heck it's doing. However, the robotic voice can be improved as it doesn't sound very good. It's very, uh, retro. You can increase slash decrease the volume through commands or via the app, and it will call out when it is doing something which I absolutely love, such as starting a clean, returning to the base, emptying a dust bag, cleaning mop pad, etc. And that way you aren't left wondering. For those of you concerned about privacy, voice commands are saved on a server, which you can go in and delete in the app. You can also turn it off if you'd like. It uses something called AV3D, which utilizes AI computing power, astrophotography grade, RGB camera, LiDAR, DTOF sensor, 
autopilot technology, and human recognition to identify and detect obstacles while scanning the home and creating paths to clean even in the dark. They do report that it works better in a well-lit environment, which I found to be true. With all this tech, it does a spectacular job at avoiding objects. On the extremely rare occurrence it did suck something up that it shouldn't have, it will automatically turn off the brush, lift itself up, and try to room off. This worked every time for me without interference. There are two protective bumpers on the front, and I found it rarely bumped into anything to activate them. Even when it did, it is very mild, making me unconcerned about damage to the vacuum or the thing it was being rude to. It never ran into me or my dog. When it detects an object, shoes, toys, dog toys, clothes, cords, socks, etc., it will clean around them with a minimal barrier, maybe an inch, inch and a half, and gets even closer around tables, chairs, or walls. I would say maybe an inch or less. It never got stuck anywhere. During the initial mapping, it shimmied itself into a small crevice under a bed that was barely big enough for it to fit. Went exploring and came out the other side full of dust with a story of adventure. There's also a dresser with some weird woodwork on the bottom where it has a single area it can enter slash exit, and it will find that spot without any trouble at all. Needless to say, I've been extremely satisfied with the accuracy and precision, as it does an incredible job, and I've never used that word. Moving on to the vacuuming, I had to adjust my expectations of what I thought was good, as comparing this directly to a wired vacuum operated by yours truly simply just isn't fair, as this is a fully wireless device, isn't very loud, and is autonomous. They report it has 5,000 pa suction power, which makes it one of the best on the market, as most other robotic vacuums are around 2,000 to 4,000 pa, with a cordless vacuum being around 10,000 pa and a wired vacuum getting up to like 30,000 pa. I just happened to have all three types of vacuums, but couldn't find pa measurements for them, as this isn't an industry-wide standard to compare different vacuums slash suction slash cleaning power. But I am going to use units of measurement anyway to give you a basic idea of, even though they don't actually mean anything other than looking good on paper. What I was able to find is across all units was how many watts they use. The robot vacuum uses 45 watts, my Samsung Jet 75 cordless vacuum has 200 watts, and my Wired Shark Vertex Duo Clean Power Fin has 1,344 watts of power. Found my robot vacuum to be very similar to my Samsung vacuum regarding cleaning power, but my Shark vacuum absolutely destroys the other two, like no contest. But it is also the best vacuum I've ever seen in my life and destroys all other wired vacuums as well, so it's not really a fair comparison. But that vacuum doesn't work by itself, doesn't automatically boost power when it re registers carpet slash rugs, or have a mopping function. And I have to do everything myself which is just, just not okay. My initial clean was a gauntlet. I purposely didn't vacuum for years, meaning there was dust, pet hair, a decomposing body, my hair, other people's hair, among who knows what else on the floor. So I said, okay, Yiko, do your thing. And it got to work and probably picked up about 75% of it. About 50% of the way through, I noticed it hadn't emptied the bag yet, which I thought was strange, seeing as it, there was a lot of stuff that it just went over. So I returned to my peasant lifestyle and found it to be overflowing with goodies, so I emptied it myself. Later in the app, I found you have two settings to either empty the bin after it is done cleaning everything or according to the set cleaning interval. What that actually means, I have no idea, but found that it would empty the bin when it got semi full and then return to cleaning which is exactly what I was looking for. This is probably overkill after doing the initial cleaning, as it should have a lot less to pick up since it's doing it more regularly. Personally, I set up a schedule where on Tuesdays it will vacuum the living room and the kitchen, then on Wednesday it will clean the two bedrooms. It will send out a notification to your smart device when the cleaning starts and if it runs into any issues. If a room happens to be closed, it will sense that and move on to the next one. However, if you're like me, 75% at this price is simply not good enough. Thankfully, I found by tweaking some settings, you can get it to about 95%. I set my vacuum to use maximum power on all of my carpet areas and normal on hardwood slash tile, along with going over my dirtiest areas, which is the living room, twice per cleaning, along with a regular schedule, and it made a huge difference, making it where if I go back over with my shark vacuum after it is done vacuuming, that I get a very little spillover, and to be honest, that spillover would probably likely be there with most other vacuums anyway. Anyways, as my shark vacuum, once again, is an absolute monster. The main brush is made from rubber and brush material, and it only got clogged once after it went through the gauntlet. When it is cleaning, it will start with the perimeter and then clean row by row inside it, which I found covers about 98% of the area, with that last 2% being the hard to reach places that I probably wouldn't get with a normal vacuum without actually moving things. In the end, I'm very satisfied that my days of manually vacuum are practically over. As for the mopping function, it comes with two mopping pads that have Osmo Turbo 2.0, which allows for 100 rows 
rotations per minute. You need to manually apply this attachment as when they are on, it will avoid all carpets, meaning if it needs to go across a carpet to get to the thing that it needs to mop, it will get stuck, making you have to physically deliver it. Which is unfortunate because again, we're just not about that peasant lifestyle anymore, you know? As it would have been epic if it could sense hardwood slash tile and activate then and then sense carpet and deactivate them, perhaps in next year's model. As for the performance, in the app you can select the water flow level from being low, medium, or high, how often it cleans the pads and empties the dustbin, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 25 minutes, and how long the hot air dry time is, two, three, or four hours. It works the same way as the vacuum, where it will go around the perimeter first and then clean everything inside it. It also vacuums while mopping, meaning the vacuum is on the front and will clean a spot before it starts to mop, which means you don't have to vacuum first, which is awesome. I found that it will make the floor damp, but not soak it, and does a good job at picking up surface level grime. But doesn't do a deep cleaning, meaning if you have an aggressive stain, it likely won't clean it the first time around, and you'll have to have it go over that area a few times, or do it manually yourself. General consensus I am seeing online from other reviewers that have a lot of robot vacuums that I don't have, is that this does an adequate slash good job at mopping, but it isn't the best. It does a good job at cleaning and drying the pads automatically, so if your primary purpose is for it to mop, you may want to look at another robot. For my floors, I could clearly see they clean them, which was proven by looking at the dirty water bucket, but how much I'm unsure, as this is my first robot's vacuum mop, I wasn't going to mop it myself because, again, I'm too lazy which is why I got a robot vacuum. Last, you can have it spot clean by going into the app and selecting an area or through voice commands. Going into the auto cleaning, one of the main selling points for this guy is that it can auto empty the dustbin and automatically washes, dries, and refills the water tank on the device. And I'm happy to report that it works well. As mentioned, you have some settings in the app that you can change so it empties less or more often. You can also manually select in the app if you want it to empty the dustbin, clean the mopping pads, or start hot air drying. That is, if those pads are attached. Last, all of this is also accessible through voice commands. When the robot is doing its thing, it will also tell you when it is going to clean the mop or empty the dustbin, or if you need to do something with the water tanks. Inside the app, you can see how full or empty the clean and dirty water tank is. The station has 20 kPa, so 20 kPa, to suck up any debris from the 0.1 gallon dustbin on the device to the 3 liter disposable dust bag on the station. They report it takes 10 seconds to empty, it cleans the mops by dumping some water in the bay, and then with some hard plastic there, the mop will go over that which then cleans the pads, which then flushes into the dirty water tank, and the robot's water reservoir is then filled with clean water from the clean tank. When it is drying the pads, you can feel a bit of heat if you get close enough with your hand. My one complaint is that I wish they would have used a reusable bin over a disposable dust bag so I don't have to keep purchasing from them, but I also understand from a business point of view why they did that. I also never found a spot to put my mop attachment when not in use, which is also kind of frustrating, so I just put it on top of the device, which completely ruins the aesthetics. Moving on to the conclusion, this thing is awesome. Is it the best at vacuuming and mopping? No, but it is right there at the top. The main thing you are buying here isn't superior cleaning quality, but automation, as the sensors are absolutely incredible at avoiding objects, not getting stuck, and mapping environments. It also auto-empties the bin and cleans the mop. The app is well-designed and powerful, the voice commands work well, and it has a built-in security camera that can be used to manually explore your house for intruders and look for things, but that picture quality is meh. Or if you're bored, you can watch it vacuum if you're also somebody who likes to watch paint dry. You weirdos. With this being one of the first of its kind, you also are paying early adopters cost, making this an expensive but likely worthy addition to your home. Because the days of you having to vacuum or mop your house are essentially a thing of the past. Like, dislike, share, subscribe if you like this video. Otherwise, I will see you and your beautiful face on the next one. God bless and peace out.